again, you have to have your Wheaties, right? Speed up your metabolism, have your breakfast, and pull hard, okay? Save the caps just for gel tech purposes, not for real world. I'm also going to take the cap off of this. Never going to use my tea. <laughs> it's funny, but it happens. Um, I'm not going to touch that cap, okay? It stays sterile. I'm going to put it in my bag. And I'm going to push this in and twist, okay? And just in case I forgot to clamp it, it's going to fill up if I didn't. But I clamped it, so I'm working to make sure I didn't do that, okay? Um, I'm going to hang that on my pole. Again, I'm keeping all this secure. It's not flopping around, okay? I need to fill my drip chamber, all right? And there is a line here. So you fill it about a half to a third of the way full. And that's very important so you don't get air in your tubing. One squeeze, I'm going to give it a little extra squeeze. So I filled my drip chamber. Okay. Now I need to get all the air out of this line. Now I want to purge this over a safe place. Some people use a trash can, but I don't have a good trash can. Um, and I'm so good that I can actually use my paper. I'm so fancy. Okay, so I'm going to use my paper. Um, and I'm going to slowly open my roller clamp, holding on to the end, because I want to make sure it drips into my uh, bag there. Now, on my tubing, I have two ports. I have a proximal port and a distal port. The distal port, distal is always the farthest away from the patient, right? Just like the toes are distal. Proximal port would be the port closest to the patient. I'm going to hang my piggyback in the distal port. When we do IV push, we're going to do proximal port, okay? Uh, I need to invert my ports because there's air in here when the fluid is coming down. So uh, I'm going to open my tubing with this one hand and I'm going to invert my ports with the other. You good on camera? Okay. I'm going to open it slowly. It'll start dripping. And then as I get more comfortable, I can be faster. When the, tubing, when the fluid goes through there, I can flip that one over. I'm watching my tubing come down. I got to make sure that port's inverted. It's slowing down because I'm holding it up. Gravity helps it flush. So if I lower it down, you can't see it, can you? Flip that port over. And I have a small air bubble there. I'm leaving my cap on. It will flush with the cap on. It keeps it secure. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that all my air is out. There was a little air bubble in that port there. Okay, clamp my tubing all the way, and I'm going to inspect to make sure I don't have any air. Again, I've made this look very easy. You guys are going to have to practice. You're going to empty your tubings out. You just take it off the bag, hold it up, let the flow go out, and practice. Okay, and save one tubing for checkoff. There's a little teeny tiny air bubble here, but that one's okay. Um, we're worried about larger ones. So I'm going to inspect to make sure I have fluid all the way to the end. Okay, um, I could go ahead and connect this to my patient, or I could go ahead and, and connect my primary. In the real world, I probably would connect it to my patient, so I probably should do that. Okay, I'm going to lay this here, keeping it clean and secure. I have my saline flush, and I have my alcohol in my pocket. Um, So all I need to do to flush is um, clean my port and my saline flush. And how much do I flush with? Five mLs. That's correct. Okay. Um, open my alcohol. We always clean our ports every time we access our ports. Always. 
And how we clean, like I pass this around, this actually has threads on it. So we're going to wipe off the top, and we're going to, it has to be for 15 seconds. So I'm going to count to a count of 10. Wipe off the top, clean the threads, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010. 15 seconds, I'm going to let it dry for 5, 1,001, 1,002. 2003, 2004, 2005. Okay? Because if you uh, go ahead and attach your syringe, you're going to give your patient a little alcohol bolus and it's going to burn. All right? That's why we let it dry. Okay. I'm taking my cap off. Again, I'm putting it cap side up because I'm going to use it again. Make sure there's no air. This is a little tricky. You actually have to, there's a valve in there. You have to push it in, okay, and twist. Now, um, my saline is still locked, uh, my uh, extension tubing, so I'm going to unclamp it. If I pushed on this and got resistance, it's because um, my clamp is clamped, all right? Now, uh, I would give it a little aspirate, just like you did with IM. I'm going to aspirate my tubing back, and I'm going to look for a flashback. I don't want to fill my tubing up with blood because this, all of these steps decrease the risk of infection because this is an automatic access to our patient's bloodstream. All right, so I'm going to aspirate. I'm going to turn my hand over so you guys can see. Um, you know what? I didn't turn my blood on this morning. So stay secure. Side rails up. Disregard the blood tubing. That's just so you guys get a blood return. Okay. All right. So I. Um, I'm going to aspirate, just looking for a flash there in my catheter. Once I get the flash, I know that I'm in the vein. That's my first sign that's in the vein. Okay. Now I'm ready to instill my saline. Remember, I'm only using five milliliters. When I push my saline in, we use the push-pause technique because uh, blood clots collect, fibrin collect on the end of that catheter, and we want to make sure that the push-pause helps flush the uh, fibrin clots away. It doesn't clot. All right, so I have aspirated. That's my first sign I'm in the vein. Now I'm going to do push pause, push pause. When I'm doing that, I'm going to assess and make sure that my catheter is in the vein. It's not <coughs> seeping out around it, it's not seeping through the connections, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. My barrel is at 10, so I'm going to go down to 5. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see. There we go. Can you still see? Okay, so push pause, push pause. We make sure it doesn't burn my patient. It does, sometimes saline burns a little bit, but you want to make sure it's not seeping in the skin. Push pause, push pause for five mLs. Okay, and I'm going to stop right there. Okay. I said it. Push pause, push pause, push pause. Okay. Um, I'm going to clamp. I'm going to cap my um, saline. Okay, and then I'm going to connect my IV fluid. Take the cap off, and I need to clean my port again because every time we access our port, we have to clean it. And what do we count to? Very good. Cleaning the threads, wiping off the top. Okay, I'm up to 10, which for 15 seconds. Let it dry for... I was counting in my head. You're right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to connect this again, push it in, that valve. This is a, a lock here, so I'm going to tighten that lock on there. Okay? And I'm going to set my pump, and you guys don't have to worry about pumps yet. All right? We're going to let you play with them in clinical. We'll talk about it in a couple weeks. For my normal saline, over six hours, I'm setting that at 83 milliliters per hour. All right? So that's going. It's infusing. I'm going to open my clamp. All right? Um, I'll open it a little bit so you guys can see. So then next I'm going to uh, hang my piggyback. Anybody want to count drops with me? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So uh, my piggyback or my IV uh, rose stephan. Third and final check, 
right drug, right time. I'm running out of time. Uh, two grams and um, right dose, all that stuff. This time I have my secondary. This is the one with the hook in it. Okay, it's shorter. I open my tubing. This one I can see better. Just pull it open. Okay, and the same thing. When I pull it out, I'm going to inspect to make sure it's intact. I can get rid of that paper. I don't need this paper. I also don't need this hook. So I'm going to put my hook over here because I don't need that. Yes. I'm going to leave it here. What's the first thing I have to do? Right. This is most important. Because if you forget to clamp it, um, your medicine will run through here and you'll lose your medication. And your patient's not getting the right dose. Okay. <coughs> so clamp it first. Keep the caps on until you're ready to spike something. Same thing. Pull off the blue port. Push it in and twist. Now this time I don't have to pinch. Oh, that is confusing. <laughs> um, this one goes on my uh, pole. All right, and now we're going to do a procedure that's called back priming. Okay, we're not going to purge the air out like we did before. We're going to back prime for several reasons. We don't want to lose our medication, and um, the saline will fill up this tubing. Okay, so how we do that, uh, which port am I going to connect this tubing to? The, 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 the distal port. port, that's right. Now, can I just connect it here? Mm -hmm. What do I have to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, for 15 seconds again. I'm counting. And I let it dry for... Take my cap off, okay? <coughs> Again, same thing. Valve, I'm going to push it in, twist, secure that. 